We're just going to wait on the Holy Ghost for just a second. This is not something that's abnormal and was just a few services and then we're done. This is the way we're going to do church. We're going to wait on the Holy Ghost. We're going to wait on the Holy Spirit and wait on Him to move. Because, because it says where two or more are gathered, there He is. Well, I don't want Him just to be here. I want Him to do some things. I want Him to be in full operation, not partial. And so we're going to slow down just a little bit. I'll just tell you what, what God's been dealing with me about. I mean, I've been looking at... I've uh, been reading a couple of books about revivals. Because that's where I'm studying. Because I believe, I believe this. Uh, I believe that we are, we are at the... the uh, launching off point of a great revival. I believe it's the last one, and I believe that it'll last years. But I think that, be, but I know this before because I because I studied it, and and I continue to study it. Is it is this? Is it before every great revival comes a renewal in the church? And before every great renewal, the first renewal is to prayer. Is to prayer. And there's some things in my spirit that we're going to be doing. But I'm not ready to launch those yet because I'm settling them. And that's okay. I'll just be real honest with you. I'm slowing down. My staff and my staff and me and Rob talked about it earlier. I'm an open book. I just kind of, when I get up here, it's like, I'll just tell you anything. I don't care. Hope that's okay. I'm not bashful and shy. <laughs> but I mean, I, you can ask my staff. I'm quick, man. God says, turn, turn now. And I'll just be real up front. Um, sometimes I'm a little too quick. And that's okay. And we got to throttle back. And I got a, I, I made a shot. I called a shot even last night. And, and this morning, I had to throttle back on it. I'll tell you what it was. Because my flesh is frustrated. I'll just... <laughs> my flesh is frustrated. Because I see these people around the world that are hungry for the gospel and, and don't have a preacher to preach to them. And in America, we've got a preacher on every corner and a whole bunch of people that sit at home in their pajamas and want to eat their eggs and bacon on Sunday morning and aren't hungry for the things of God. And you have more opportunity than anybody else in the world. And we're, oh my, and we're, and we're just not there yet. And, and I'll just, can I just, I'm just, I'm not going to ask you permission. It just frustrates me. It just frustrates me sometimes. And so I told them, I said, cancel the live stream. If they can't get here, they ain't watching. Let them watch somebody else that waters the word down. Let them, let them watch somebody. I'll, I'll give you a list. See, I, I moved too quick. It's okay. Come on. You love me anyway. So I throttled back because we have people that are, that are sick and that are hurting that, that watch our live stream, and I get that. But how, well, how long is it going to take us to wake up? How long is it going to take us to stand up as, as not, not believers, as the church and say revival now? Renew our spirit now. Renew us now to some things. And I'm willing to clear my schedule. I'm willing to clear my calendar. There's nothing more important than the move of God. There's, I'll say it again because I didn't get nearly enough. There is nothing in your life that is more important than the move, the presence, and the power of God. Period. And whatever you have to sacrifice your flesh for it, do it. Come on. I wish that I could meal prep meals. 
I wish I could. I can't. I've tried. I just buy a whole bunch of stuff and it goes to rot. But, you know, if that stuff gets in the way of, of being here or the presence and the power of God in a service, man, catch McDonald's and, and bless it. Double bless it if it's McDonald's. But, but catch something quick and get in the presence of God in an atmosphere like this my heart cry is that every time we have service God doubles his anointing in this place I'm serious it's going to feel different but I believe that God's going to do it he's going to double his anointing double his power double the signs wonders and miracles But see, it doesn't just depend on me. William Seymour was a fantastic minister. I firmly believe that. I've read some of his sermons. And some of them, man, y'all think I'm hard. Y'all would, man, I choked. And I listened to hard people. (laughs) And I choked. I was like, you said that from the pulpit. (laughs) Jarring things. Things they needed to hear. But you know they didn't show up just on Sunday morning from 9 to, or 10 to 11.30. There were two times specifically that they prayed so long, the power of God manifested itself so strongly that there was literal, come on, there were people in the neighborhood saw fire on top of the building and called the fire department. They called the fire department. That, has to, that, that means that they thought it was real. Like, that's, that's real fire. That's real danger. Brother Hagen in 19, 1980 said, said the, in the last day revival that you'll have Old Testament, New Testament, and modern day, modern day signs, wonders, and miracles happen in the same time. Hallelujah. Just priming the pump here. We got to get hungry, guys. We got to get so hungry. I, I, don't, I don't know if you've ever... It, it, maybe you're not a foodie like me. I know some of you are. But... The other night, I'll, I'll, give, you the, I'll give you a good example. Everything and everything around me. If you're new here, if you if you don't like food, I don't know what to tell you, because I'm just a foodie. I just every illustration I give is going to be around food. So, so get you some. So, but the other night I was crazy. We just got back, and Pastor Jen was like, "What are you? Are you hungry?" And I was like, "Yeah, kinda." And she goes, "Y'all been there? What are you hungry for?" Well, I don't know. And we looked and looked around, and she's like, well, what do, you, what do you want? What do you want? And I was like, honestly, what I want is hot wings. I want, like, I want a big old mess of 12 flats only hot wings and, and some french fries. Hallelujah. And Tracy's laughing because he's like, this guy is a junkie. He's got to get off the food. Get off the food train, Pastor. You know what we had? Taco Bell. You know who was dissatisfied? This guy. Taco Bell does not, does not satisfy the craving for, for hot wings. What if, we, what if we were hungry for the anointing so much that nothing else satisfied? What if we got so hungry and it was like, I just, I could Grubhub, but man, it's so much better just to go to Wingstop and they're hot right there. And, and it's like, no, no, I want to watch you bring them out of the grease and do your, do your thing and put them on the plate and I'm going to eat them and they're going to burn my mouth. And it's going to be amazing. What if we were about that? What if we were like that about the things of God? This isn't my message yet, so y'all just hold on. Because to really have a move of God, to really have lasting revival, it takes a hungry church. 
It takes a hungry church that's just not satisfied with, with the other stuff. And it's just like, I, I, that was, I mean, Taco Bell's fine. Unless, we like Taco Bell. Y'all, are like, I hear, I look a whole bunch, no. Come on, come on, right there, right there. Give her a Taco Bell gift card, right there. I don't have one, but if I did, I'd give you one. But but Taco Bell doesn't satisfy. What if we were so hungry? Again, what if we were so hungry for a move of God that we just weren't satisfied with anything else? I mean, what if, come on, uh-huh, yeah, I'll go to work, but. Man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray in the spirit at work because I just, there's something on the inside that's just, that's working. There, there's something that I'm just not, yeah, I'll go, I'll go eat with friends, but man, when they say certain things, it just, why? Because it's dissatisfying. It, it stops, it stops becoming, don't talk that way around me because I'm a, I'm a C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N. And I can sing the song. Come on, you guys raised in children's church. Can you sing that song? Yeah, probably. I am a C. I am a C-H. Come on. There we go. Now it's in your head. You're welcome. But what if we weren't, what, what if we didn't just hang around people and, and it grieves you that they talk a certain way or do certain things just because you're a you're a Christian but because you're hungry for something else and it's like that just doesn't satisfy anymore come on don't you want to talk about the boss no it just doesn't satisfy anymore it used to I used to really like it come on don't you want to talk about so and so your friend behind your back behind their back so that way they don't and, and they'll never know yeah, I used to like doing that and that used to be a lot of fun but it just, it just doesn't satisfy anymore because I'm hungry for him. And the only thing that satisfies, when we get hungry for him, revival will happen. But see, we've got to renew the hunger for him. We've got to renew the hunger for him. I firmly believe that we are on, we are on the verge of a, of a great revival, but we need to recognize, church, that revival is for the world, renewal is for the church. We pray for revival, but really what we need is a renewal first. We need a renewal back to the things of God. That we're willing to say, you're worthy of it all. That means your time. (sighs) Come on. Uh, Most of the time, most of the time we say you're worthy of it all except for my time that's just the truth we do come on I'm guilty I won't ask you to raise your hand I'm guilty when I look at it I don't naturally say it with my mouth but I've said it with my actions you're worthy of it all except I'm hungry and I got things to do so let me go do those Turn with me to Matthew. I want to help you just a little bit today because, because see, I, I, again, I believe, I've said this three or four times, I believe that we're on, on the verge of the, the last, the last great revival. I believe it'll last years, but, but, but there's some things that I want to give you, and they're found in Matthew. First, I'm going to give you this quote by David Wilkerson. this is out of a prophecy that he had years ago I want to make a statement with the greatest spiritual authority possible I make it backed by the covenant as sure as the one made to Noah there is going to be a final midnight hour revival one which will break forth on all sides Zion will try Zion will travail and many, many children will be given to her. There will be 
great singing and shouting in Zion, and Zion will say, where have these come from? Now listen to this. It will be a revival of righteousness. It will be a revival of righteousness. I said just a second ago, revival is for the world and renewal is renewal is for is for the church. I think that we need to we need to spend some time renewing ourselves to righteousness. See, but but the issue is this is that most of the time when we hear about righteousness, when we talk about righteousness in the church, we hear it from from this perspective. Found in 2 Corinthians 5:21, just write it down. God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. That's Jesus. So that in him we might become the the righteous of God or the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. What that literally, that word righteousness means is in right standing with God. We, We have taught that for years as a positional truth. We've taught that as a, you're righteous. You've been made righteous. And that's true. That's true. But turn over to Matthew real quick. Matthew 21. Because we're talking in in this series called Seven Days, and we're on the on the third day here. And I want you to see what Jesus says about righteousness and how he connects it. Because I think majority of the time, Jesus, when Jesus talked about righteousness, he taught it from a, from a different slant than just a positional truth. That you've been made righteous. That is true. I don't want to negate that. I don't want to belittle that. That is a fact. That is truth. When you become, when you ask Jesus into your heart, Romans 10, 9 says, when you, when you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, it's a two-part system, that, that you are saved or, or you are made righteous. But look at what Jesus said. Jesus said in verse 20, chapter 21, verse 30, or 31, 32, Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, he's talking to the tax collectors. Again, or not tax collectors, I'm sorry. He's talking to the Pharisees and Sadducees, the religious people. Any great move of God is gonna have religious people hate it. Actually, you can spot them easier in revival than you can outside of revival. Because they'll, come on, they'll be the ones on the news going, can you believe? They're saying, they're saying New Life Church had 300 healings this week. I don't believe it. Bless God. And their whole mouth shakes like mine does because I'm too many. Anyway, um, just fill in the blank. I've been eating. (laughs) I've been in Mexico. So Mexican weight doesn't count. If you gain it in Mexico, it doesn't count. It doesn't. I read. I read that. It's in. It's in a book. Anyway, um, no, it's not. I lied, but that's okay. All right. Matthew twenty-one verse three. Y'all get me off track. All right, here we go. Truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes. Uh oh. The tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of heaven ahead of you. How do you think that made them feel? Come on. Jesus didn't teach watered down stuff. We like to water it down real good so it's palatable to our American palate. And it doesn't hurt our feelings. Like it or lump it. That's just the truth. That's what we do. He didn't. He said the the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going to be ahead of you. Look at this verse. Verse 34. Verse 32. And John came. For John came to show you. The way of righteousness. But what did John preach? Go to Matthew 3. Or write it down. And look at the screen. Matthew 3, verse 8. Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. 
I think the first step of the church renewal is going to be repentance. I do. Guys, I think we've missed it. I think we've missed it. I think we've stood on a positional truth and not had the fruit to prove it. Righteousness isn't just who you are. It's the fruit you produce. Righteousness is not just who you are. I am righteous. You're right. Do you have fruit to prove it? I shouldn't even say you're right. What if we, what if we ask that question? I've been made righteous. I've been made righteous in, in Jesus. Okay, where's your fruit? Don't ask that question to yourself unless you want a real answer. Come on. Do you have the fruit to produce to prove your righteousness? Or are you just religious? I think that it's time to get back to something. We need to renew ourselves. We need to renew our church. We need to be renewed back to righteousness and a righteous standard of come on of acting of doing some things. Matthew 22, verses, verses 1 through 12. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. Jesus spoke to them. Jesus spoke to them again in a parable saying, The kingdom of heaven is like, the, like a king who prepares a wedding banquet for his son. He sends his servants to those who had been invited to the, to the banquet to tell them to come, but they, re, but they refused to come. Verse 4, Then he sent more, some more servants and said, Tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatted cattle have been butchered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. Verse 5, But... They paid no attention and went off, one to his fields, another to his business. The rest seized the servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their cities. Verse 8. I'm skipping a little bit. Then he said to his servants... Then he said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready for those who I invited, but does but not deserve, but did not deserve to come. So go to the street corner and invite the bank invite to the banquet anyone in, you can find. Say that's me. He went to find me. Come on, that's me. Okay. Verse 10. So the servant went out into the street and gathered the people. They could find all the people they could find, uh, the bad, the bad as well as the good, and the wedding and the wedding hall was filled with guests. Verse eleven. This is where it gets interesting. But when the king came in, when the king came in to see the guest, he noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. Now stop right there. The Passion Translation has a really interesting commentary, and I want to read it to you. And it says, those invited, to, those invited to come from the street had no opportunity to buy wedding clothes. They were just gathering people. Come on, let's go. Get, in, get, into, the, get into the hall. We want to pack the hall. The king said, pack the hall. We're packing the hall. They had no opportunity to buy wedding clothes, which was their tradition. This wedding robe is a picture of the garment of righteousness. That grace provides for us the man without the wedding garment had one provided but he didn't want to change into his new clothes the change is necessary for our king provides garments of white linen for us to wear 
there are wedding garments. Now turn to Revelation real quick. I'm, I'm building something here. I'm building something here. Just give me just a second. Revelation 19, verse 6. And I know I'm reading a lot, but I've got a lot of pathways that I want to go because I want to show you what righteousness looks like, not just feels like. See, it's not just a positional truth. It's a, it's a truth of action as well. It's a truth of proving as well. I've been made righteous in Christ Jesus through what he did for me. Prove it. Prove it by what you do. Revelation, 6, Revelation 19, verse 6 through 8 says, Then I heard what sounds like a great multitude, like a roar of rushing waters, and like a road, like a load, uh, like a loud, sorry, like loud pearls of thunder shouting, Hallelujah, our Lord God Almighty reigns. Verse 7, Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory for the wedding of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready verse 8 fine linen brought bright and clean was given to her to wear fine linen stands fine linen actually stands for your act, righteous actions for your righteous actions it's what you do fine linen has to do with your righteous actions you may say, well, Pastor Matt, we're saved. We're saved by grace. You're right, we are. We're saved by grace through faith. That's Ephesians, Ephesians 2 8. You're right. Flip over to James 2. See, because we teach, we teach sometimes the slant. And I'm trying not to teach this slant either. Because you're not saved by works, you're saved by grace. But you're but Come on, but faith has works attached to it. And if you say that you're saved, where are your works? And if you say that you're righteous, where are your works? Come on, we're renewing ourselves to righteousness here. We've got some things to do. And to do them, we can't be lazy. It's just a fact, guys. Take that clap, JC. I'll receive it. I multiplied it and gave it back to him, and there it was. <laughs> Louder. Amen. James 2. James 2. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go read 14 through 19. I'm not gonna go all, I'm not gonna go there the whole way. Okay? 14 says. Uh, and I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I'm going to do something that I try not to do. I'm going to pull just a little bit, but read the whole thing and it's, and I'm going to keep in context. Okay. So, so I'm trying not to, uh, yeah. So if someone claims verse 14, uh, what good is it brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith, but has not works, has not deeds, jump down to 17 in the same way, faith by itself if it is not accompanied by actions is dead look at verse 21 in the passion the passion translation is so good here I've got it pulled up right here in my handy dandy pocket bible wasn't our ancestor Abraham found righteousness be, found righteous before God because of his works? Because of his works. You're saved by grace, but, but your works prove it. The world can't see Jesus in your heart. He can, they can only see Jesus in your actions. And we got a whole bunch of believers out there. Uh, honestly, we've got a whole bunch of believers out there doing damage and helping the enemy because their actions don't line up with their words. 
And we got a whole bunch of people out there going, I don't want to have anything to do with Christianity. I don't want to have anything to do with the church. I don't want to have anything to do with that entire organized system. I watch it on TikTok. I try to stay up to date with it. Honestly, I do. Because I want to see what they're saying. And 90% of the time, it's out of pain and hurt because somebody's actions don't want, their righteous inside doesn't line up with their unholy outside. And they damage people. And when you hurt people, the move of God, it, it just, it hinders it. And so, so we have to renew ourselves to righteousness. The Spirit of God told me earlier this week, as I was getting this ready, and honestly, I was just praying that my, that my voice was strong, and because I called Matt on Monday, or I talked to Matt, I texted him, and was like, dude, you better, you better be ready to preach. And by Tuesday, actually, because I know Miss June and these guys were praying for my voice, they, they, my voice was stronger and it got stronger every day. But as I was praying and prepping for this, and I designed this for a reason, to be, to be a kind of a, 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 a cattle prod. Most of y'all don't know what a cattle prod is. That's all right. I'll tell you. They, so when my granddad had, had, had cows, uh, he, in, his, in his garage, uh, he had two things, uh, actually three. He had, a short end, he had a short end whip that was like the stick was long and the whip was like about this long. And it just made a real loud, loud crack. And usually uh, it'll get cows to move. But he had a couple of them that were just a little stubborn. There's no stubborn people in here, right? None but me, because I've been a little stubborn. Y'all have never been stubborn. I know that. Y'all look at me very holy, and I know that you've never been stubborn before. But I have. And you know, that sound doesn't do anything for a stubborn cow. And so you have to get the longer, the longer whip that's that's leather and it and 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 my granddad was really skilled at it and he could barely touch him and it just got their attention it didn't hurt him it just got their attention but he had a couple that were still really stubborn none of y'all all of me none of y'all all of me and then he had this so he had this device in his in his shed in his in his garage and it was a low voltage cattle prod. And it had two ends, like, well, it was kind of like this, and, and a button. And it was to assist them in obedience. I tried to design this in multiple levels so that, that way, in whatever area you're in, I hope that you, you don't need the cattle prod like I've needed it sometimes. But sometimes we do. And that's okay. That's okay. I'm going to encourage you to do something today that I've never done before. But first, with every head bowed, every eye closed. Maybe that's you today, and you need to renew yourself to righteousness. You say, Pastor Matt, I, I, I don't know where I lost my way. I just did. Maybe you know, maybe you don't. But my, but my actions aren't lining up with, 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 what, with, with my righteousness on the inside. My, my actions... Honestly, Pastor Matt, my, my actions are pretty opposite of that. I'm kind of actually like, like what Jesus said um, later on in, in chapter 23, that, that he said, I'm kind of like a whitewashed tomb. If I have to really look inside me, Pastor Matt, and I'm, I'm doing that right now, maybe that's you. And, and Jesus said, he was talking to the Pharisees again, and he said, you're like a whitewashed tomb. You're beautiful on the outside. But you got bones and nasty stuff on the inside. Can I, can I tell you something? He wants to get you cleaned up today. 
He wants to clean. He doesn't want you to leave that way. And so maybe that's you with nobody looking around. It's just between me and you. It's just between me and you. I want you to just slip up your hand. Say, hey, that's me. That's me. I, 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 I got to get it right. I, there's some righteous things that I got to get right here. I don't want to leave the same way. Come on, I know there's more. I see those couple of hands. I see them. Yep, I see that one. I see that one. Yep. I know there's more. My actions aren't lining up with the, with the things on the inside. I, I feel kind of like Paul. I, I, I want to do the right thing, but I keep doing this thing. I keep doing these things. Real quick, real quick, real quick. Hallelujah. Anybody else? I'm looking around for one more second. Anybody else? I see it. I see it. Okay, I'm going to make... I'm, everybody looking at me. Now I'm going to do something that I've never done before. It's going to take courage on your end. I don't know if you'll do it. I don't know if you'll obey God or, or not. But this is the truth. Is that when they persecuted, prosecuted, tried, whatever you want to say there, spit on, whipped, put a, cat, put a, put a crown of thorns on, and eventually crucified... Everything Jesus did was in public. Everything he did was in public for all to see. For everyone to see. I've tried to, and I think, I think we really are kind of the, the planet fitness of, of churches. There's no judgment here. It's a judgment-free zone. Just don't clank your righteousness around. Whoo, that was good. That was good. Write that down. But he made an open declaration to you. And you've made a private one to him. So I want you to, I want to ask you, come up here. I'm going to pray for you. And we're going to get cleaned up today. I don't know if anybody will. But will you have the boldness to say, that's me. I want to get cleaned up and I'm not satisfied. I'm not going to leave today without getting my tomb cleaned up. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be fake anymore. I'm going to be real. Come on, that's one. Come on, that's courage right there. That's courage right there. Come on. Come on, there's two, there's three. Even if you didn't, even if you didn't raise your hand. Right now is your moment. Worship team, worship team, come on. Right now is your moment. Today's your day. Even if you didn't. He made a, he made a public declaration for you. Will you make a public declaration for him?